our speaker of the hour, none other than Apostle Linda Wilson. Let's receive it by word of amen. amen. Bear with me, the Holy Ghost is working in me. Thank you, Pastor, for that dance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name 
name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Touch everyone here tonight in the name of Jesus. Let them know that you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In the name of Jesus. Whatever needs to be done, let it be done at your will, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You may sit down right now. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Hines, can you come and give this uh, microphone to Sister Melissa, please? She's going to do some reading for me tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Lord, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's okay. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Sister Minister. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hold it. Just put a hold on that one right there. It says, put on your whole armor. How many of you are with your whole armor on tonight? All right. Or did you just walk in God's house and put your armors on? That when you leave here, your armor goes off. Right. Did you come in with your whole armor on? Oh, yes. Amen. We got to be... Filled with the Holy Ghost constantly, every day, 24 hours of our life. Yes. We have no time to babysit. Babysit days is over. Come on. We all know that we say we're living in the last days. It's here and Jesus is coming soon. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I was looking at this word today and the Holy Ghost told me this. He said that, that you... He's talking about you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. We are supposed to stand. We are supposed to be where we are today. Amen. Too many stuff goes on in the house of God is not good. Amen. We have to be strong in the Lord because we're fighting not, we should not be fighting against each other. That's right. That's right. That's right. We are supposed to be fighting against the devil. Because the devil comes to what? To steal, to kill, and destroy. If he can destroy you, he got it made. He got it made. He comes to mess your mind up. God said, we have choice daily. It's a daily thing. When we wake up in the morning, when your feet hit the ground, you have a choice to serve the Lord or you have a choice to sit down and waller in yourself. You have a choice. Amen. You have a choice to follow Jesus. You have a choice to sit back. Ain't nobody come, gonna come run behind you and pick you up. Because you got to work for your own salvation. It's an individual we can stand here and preach to you all day, all night, and get blown in the face. Mm -hmm. That's up to you. That's up to you. Your mind got to be right. Your mind got to be Jesus. Jesus when you wake up. Jesus when you go down. Jesus when you're going out the door. Jesus when you're on the bus. Jesus everywhere you go. When you're walking in the grocery store. Jesus. Yeah. When you 
shopping, when you're going downtown, uptown, in between, wherever you're going, it should be Jesus. Because when you say Jesus, every demon got to run. He can't hang out. He cannot hang out. Because the power of Jesus will move the mountains. It will move the mountains. Oh my God. Okay, Sister Melissa. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, yes. that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, mm -hmm. and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Okay, hold it. This took me back. I went into the dictionary, and the Romans, you know, they have those whole armor, the suit on. And it's all made out of metals. But they were fully armored. You never see through this whole chapter that God said, he told us to put on the whole armor because why? He got our back. Amen. Our back is already taken care of. Amen. It's the front part and around us. And you know that song, I couldn't remember that song, Pastor Brown. You know, it was, I know it was coming out from Ezekiel, but the world would say, connect it to your bone and your bone, or whatever they say. You know, I was thinking about that, and I started to laugh. That's it, the dry bone. I said, God, you're so funny. It's something about when you are truly serving the Lord. I don't know about you. I forget a lot of early songs, those songs that we used to grow up with. I can't even remember them. But I know that it was in Ezekiel, the dry bones. So if it's all connected, we should be all connected. But we're not all connected. Hello. Bring a ding ding. Let's get it right. We are not connected. We are going to be connected to if I like you, if I don't like you, if I like you. Let's get real. It's time to put your pity pat things all down, God. God is not pleased. He is not pleased with his children. Right. Too many stuff goes on in the house of God. Amen. How are you going to be affected to the people on the outside? How are you going to walk the street? They need to see the Jesus in you. You might be the last Jesus that they see. You might be the only Jesus walking in the prison. You might be the only one in a nursing home. Or in your neighborhood. Yes, How many of you tell your neighbors around you uh -oh. about Jesus? Uh -oh. Or do we all just come on in? Good morning. Come on, Apostle. I know what I'm saying because I'm one of them. All right. That's right. Amen. All right. Amen. I live in a neighborhood. I believe with all the duckies in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Like here. All right. So I don't know if I'm supposed to come out and say, good morning, do you know Jesus? Say it, say it. Preach it. Yes. But I let my neighbors in the backyard know who Jesus is. Because right. they can't see me anyway. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yes. We can get messed up because why? Hello. Your flesh. Your flesh stinks. Yeah. Our flesh stinks to God's nostrils. He cannot stand that. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. That's why he said we have to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and we have to be, I always say, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus. Because if you are truly wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus, you'll not have any problem. But I'm not going to tell you, you're not. God allows us to walk through that valley. Yes. He allows us to go to the mountain top. Right, he right. allows us to come back to the valley so he can work with you. Because yes. yes. your attitude's got to change. Uh -oh. You say we put on the whole armor and you're still coming out talking crazy? We cannot be that way. We have to be straight up. If we live in righteous, if the breastplate of righteousness is upon us and we live here and get outside and talking crazy. Come on, Apostle. 
Your attitude has not changed. Our attitude has to change. If we don't change, you think you're fooling anybody? You can fool everybody, anybody, but you can't fool God. You can tell me anything you want, I don't care. You cannot hide from my Abba Father. That's a very hard thing to do. Hold on, Melissa. That armor I'm telling you about, the armor, is a whole thing. I, would, I could imagine those mans walking around in a battlefield with all the whole thing on, dragon, hot. It must be hot in those days. But that was the wall suit in the natural. If you, go, if you were in the military, I don't care what branch you are, you have to be suited up. You can't go to the battlefield with an empty gun. You got to have a helmet on. You can't pop out from those uh, tanks when the tank is moving and you're going to pop your head out with no helmet on. Hello. That's how some of us are. We got no helmets on. We have stepping. We cannot play any more games with God. Amen. Let's get real. Amen. If you need deliverance, tell God it's you. Amen. If it's me, I tell God all the time. Yeah. I'm, not, I, I'm not ashamed to tell God I messed up. That's the only way it's going to work. Because I don't know your relationship with him. But he talks to me different. He has to talk to me because I come from the islands. Come on, right. So it's kind of broken English for me. Come on. But he understands yes. that. Hallelujah. He don't have to speak hyperbolic words to me. It goes right over me. That's right. He comes out to where I can understand him on, and he can understand me. Yes. See, that's a relationship that you got to have. If you don't have that relationship, you messed up. That's right. Oh, that's right. You cannot be arm half naked. I believe the dogs even know how to do things and how to go and hide and where to go. But God said we are one of the worst he ever created. And he had to repent that he made us to his image. We have to stop doing what you all do, what we all do. Pray hanky panky, you need to stop. There's no more time for this game. It's a battlefield. We are on the battlefield. We are fighting for our for the people that is not saved. We're fighting for the people that's out there running loose like a mongoose. And we have the answer and we're dancing to the tunics. How is that? Come on. How is that? Come on. Cannot be so. Either you're going to walk that field, you're going to walk it straight, because when you're in the military, when they tell you to walk, you walk. When they tell you to line up, you line up. When they tell you to go to the right, you go to the right. You don't tell them, what right? Where, where is it? <laughs> If he tell you you buckle down, you buckle down. If he tell you to strip down, that's what you do. You are accountable for yourself. Everything that you do, you are accountable for yourself. Pastor cannot do for me. And I can't do for him. Because when we stand before God, guess what? It ain't going to be me and Pastor. Right, it's going to be Pastor himself and me alone. Hello. Come on, Apostle. Naked you was born, and guess what? When you go in that coffin, it's going to be a slip behind your back. Yes. And bye-bye. That's right. Come on. Yes. Help us, Lord. Glory, God. Help us. It's time to get right. Too much baby going on. Mm. 
too much won't mean you hurt my feelings. Good. If I hurt your feelings, suck it in. If your feelings get hurt, it's because you had your hands in the wrong place in the first place. If your hands is out of that cookie jar, I always call it cookie jar, it will work better for you. Hallelujah. Okay, Sister Melissa. We're moving on now. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Mm. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all the pre preservance and supplication for all saints. Amen. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly yes. to make known the mystery of the gospel, yes. for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. Hold it. Now look at this. It takes me back to Paul. You know, Paul, Paul was something else. Yes, he was. <laughs> to me, Paul was awesome and he was marvelous. He might have killed all them Christians, but that was his job to do. He was called to do that. He was trained to do that. He knew how to live with much, and he knew how to live with little. He knew how to shut his mouth, and he knew how to open his mouth. He knew how to bless, and he knew how to cut it off. We always say, oh, God is going to bless. God bless you when you woke up. People always say, oh, God, bless me, bless me. You need to shut up and look at yourself because, number one, God woke you up. That's your biggest blessing of all. Don't you know that salvation is one of the greatest miracles of all? When the soul gets saved, the whole heaven celebrates. One soul. The whole heaven celebrates. So if Paul could march in and do exactly what was told, it's called obedient saints. I deal with a lot of saints in here. I don't know. You know if you're saints or not. It's called obedience. Obedience is what's going to take you and carry you a long way. But when you come up against the leaders, you are in trouble. All right. yes. Amen. I've seen God move people out of my way like poof. You know what? He'll do it. I've seen God just take them and go, bye-bye. I do not believe I'm the one. Not, I'm not going to say all leaders. No, it's me, Munwa, right here. I do not believe in running after people. I believe if you tell me God sent you, then let it be done and let it be God. Amen. Amen. All right. We are. I'm a street ministry. Come on now. We're not in the comfort zone here. You're out in the dirt. When the dust blow, guess what? The dust is blowing with you. You see what I'm saying? God put us in every area, and he wants us to walk in that area. He wants us to be fully armored. And I'm not talking about our flesh. I'm talking about in our spiritual realm. You got to be spiritual loaded up that you can take your machine gun and just Amen. And how is that? That's the word of God. People don't want you to tell them the truth. They would rather you lie to them and agree with them and they're still going to hell. I believe the Bible said where the tree falls, that's where, it, where you're going. If your hand was messed up in the cookie jar, that's where you're going to go. Amen. And if you did not have time 
to call on Jesus or to repent, hell is still going to be there. It's expanding and it's getting bigger. Yes. Now, you want to go to hell? Help yourself. <laughs> but I ain't coming like Pastor Brown said. I ain't coming. I already been there. I ain't going. You ain't going to get no peace down there. You'll be locked up with the angels all the way down in the, in the bottom of the pit. I'm telling you this to help you. I'm telling you this because God wants you to know that he is serious. He said, I'm starting from my house. I'm cleaning out the mess. We think we're going to go. A lot of us ain't going to make it to heaven. Because why? We're just flipping by the riverside of Egypt. Pastor Brown always said that. Take, she takes her clothes and do that. <laughs> That's playing footsie. Mm -hmm. ha. Yep. It may not be where you go out there and get a man or get a woman. It can be your own attitude in your own house. Oh, you can live in your walking oh, this door. Yeah. You're looking good. You're acting good. But when you go home, it's a different story. I don't have to live in your house to know that. Because I really don't care how you live. Because I'm not God. But your action speaks for you. When you get on the phone, you call a sister. What? Ooh, did I go to the right house? Come on, preacher. You're preaching right. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Apostle, I'm sorry. Hey, it's okay. He's preaching, Apostle. He's preaching on attitude. I said, I'll call back later. real. Help us, God. But you see what God is doing? He tried to tell us it's our flesh that needs to die. We need to grow up in Him. That's right. Yes. Because if you don't do what you're supposed to do, God will bring somebody else to do it for you. And then you're going to come back and tell your leader, or the leaders, or the leaders, well, why didn't you let me do that? Or why couldn't I do that? Well, I could do that because I was called to do that. Really? If you were called to do that, then you shouldn't have any problem. So if you had your whole armor of God and the spiritual walking with the Holy Ghost, then you should have not have any problem. Now, our pastor did a dance tonight. It would be foolish of me if I went there and did that and know that wasn't me. <laughs> Stay in your own lane. We always want to cross over, cross over, cross over. When we get to there, we're all messed up. And who messed you up? Yourself. We are easy to blame other people when we say, bang, you got three looking at you. That's right. Come on. That's right. You got three looking at you. And the thumb. That's what she said. God is good. If we all say God is good. Oh, yes, he is. Do you really know how good he is? Do you know what he has done for you? Don't you know how far he brought you? Why would you turn around and go back? When he set you free, and free indeed you are. I can understand when you're in the house of God half of your life and you walk away from the Lord. Can you imagine when you out there you just turn your back and drop dead? There was a rapper. I can't remember his name. He said he took, what was that song done? Oh, Pastor Fred, I'm sorry. It happened too quick. It happened too quick. 
I wish I could remember that rapper, but I can't remember his name because he doesn't rap anymore with my son-in-law. They, they all they, they just out there. So pray for them. Amen. Amen. But see, he said it happened so quick. Everything and anything can happen so quick in your life. How do you know you're not going to wake up in the morning? How do you know when you leave here and walk out there that you're not going to drop dead like that? Is your heart right with God? Do you have your spiritual life in order? Are you really filled with the Holy Ghost? That when a demon see you coming, he got to run. When he see you hit that voice, oh my God, she's up again. You got to know that the demon come, is here to steal, to kill, and to destroy because he owns this here. God gave him to me. And we dance around his tulips. And we play with him. Grown people, adults, Children of God, we are the children of God. Get your house in order, I don't care. Fix it up. Get right, because there's people out there that somebody is waiting for you. But you're too busy doing your own thing. Playing up in a crooked jaw when they need to be out. Put on your whole armor. You said put on your whole armor. You're walking out with your whole armor. When you're walking with your whole armor, God got your back. He said, I got you. I got you. He got your back. He got you covered. Glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I wake up in the morning. I said, Lord, renew my mind like Christ's mind. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Fill me up today with the power of the Holy yes, Ghost. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Use me whatsoever you see. Order my footsteps. All right. Wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, I want to do it because of who you are in me. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus said, didn't you know Jesus said that greater things that we shall do? Yes, greater things. How is that we do greater things than Jesus? He said, because he abide in you. And he in me. Hey, so what does that make me? The Jesus in me. Love the Jesus in you. Hello. Love covers a multitude. When you tell people that you love them. Don't lie. If you don't love me, don't tell me you love me, and then you go and walk in and go, I will not have to love. But see, I'm one of God's children who's not afraid to speak. God gave me bonus a long time ago when I first came, when I first got saved, before I even got saved. I told God, no, I don't want to serve you. I want to party. Ain't that stupid? <laughs> God said, I want you to serve me. I said, no, I do not want to serve you. I want to go party. How much more party can you do? How much more drinking can we do? How much more smoking can we do? How much more high can we get? Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Ghost high for me today. Because now I can say, I know when I wake up in the morning, I know what bed I'm coming out. I don't have to worry about nothing else. Now when I wake up, I'm looking which doggy is with me. Bevan, Kumu, Nani, or which one, Brownie? And I tell you, my little, my dog is they, they love to pray because of Sister Loretta. I thought he was nuts. <laughs> but you see, God got a sense of humor, folks. Yes, He does. He did not make any one of us the same way because if He did, it will be a boring world. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 But 
but since he made us all mixed up, messed up, that he can fix us up, put us back in the place we need to be, anoint us, bless us with the Holy Spirit. How much more do you need? Do you think for one split second that God can come off his throne? He ain't going to do that. He already done it. He's not going to come down and get you. He already did it. It's up to you how you're going to do it. So get your mind straight with him. But most of all, your heart. Your heart. God said it's a wicked place where no one can see your heart. Your heart. Your heart is one of the wickedest places. God said we praise him with our mouth, but our heart is far from him. Far from him. But yet he loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son. Who is going to die on a cross? Stretch out, nail to the, the, the tree. Who is going to do that for filthy rags like us? Who's going to do that? Your mama, your daddy, your brothers, your sisters, your children. They give you a headache? I got grandchildren. I asked God, God, you got to do something with them. You got to just do something with them. Because I know that they're good in them. They're good. They got good in them. We have to keep praying for them. But God is going to bring them. He got to bring them because he promised. And the one thing with the God we serve, he don't go back on his words. He's not like you and I. Come on, Apostle. Come on. If we tell you we're going to do something, I try to keep my word. But if I do not keep my word, it's not because I didn't want to. It's because I forget sometimes. Many times I forget. And when I remember, I said, oh, my God, i got to take care of that. You see how real you got to be with Jesus? Because Jesus abides in you. He walks in you. He talks with you. Everywhere you go, he know what you're doing. He know if you're right or wrong. And when you're sitting there all lonely by yourself, the enemy, that's when the devil operates in your mind. You're feeling sorry for yourself. You need to shake it off and get up and slap your head and tell the devil, go to hell where he belongs under your feet. Stop his head, pull him up. Put him back under you and move on. Move on. He cannot win unless you allow him. He cannot move forward unless you allow him. He only know what you did a minute ago. He only know what you did yesterday. He doesn't know what's coming ahead for you. He don't know your future. God do. God knows your future. The enemy knows my one minute ago. He knows my yesterday. All he can do is give me my past. But you know, I tell the devil, I love my past. I said, there's nothing in my past that I will change. Because if I change it, I would never be here today. People say, oh, if, if I could change this, I could change that. Let's get real. You enjoy doing what you did. That's why God switched it over. You guys changed partners. That's all we do. Switch it over. Different partners. A better one. A higher mighty. The almighty God that loves us more than our parents, our husband, our mama, daddy, whoever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God loves us more. Yes, yes, he does. Unconditioned. Yes. He doesn't tell me, I love you, but you're going to have to do this. And if you don't do that, I'm going to take my love away from you. He's not that way. He 
loves us unconditioned, even through our flaws, yes. even through our bad tempers yes. that we have. Even when we go there, maybe you never go there, but when the devil take me there, my mind just go crazy, I go there. Then I have to repent. That's why Jesus said, repent, repent, repent. So I don't mind, repent, repent, repent. That's what makes you grow in the Lord. That's what makes you stronger every day. When you're honest with the Lord about yourself, you can move forward. There's nothing that you cannot do without God. You can do anything with God. With God, you can do everything. So we walk around thinking that we're okay, and you're not okay, then you need to say, God, I'm not okay. So many people around the world walking around say, I'm okay. No, you're not okay. Tell God, God, I'm not okay. I messed up. I don't know about you, but when I, when I know that I know that I know I messed up, I'm not going to call you and tell you, hey, I messed up. <laughs> when I already know, Jesus already know what I did. But he said, well, go and come tell somebody that I, I'm not the same. You go and talk to them. You go and tell somebody else. Because I know one thing for sure. What I said to this pastor here, I know you never heard it. That's why I know. That's all right, Apostle. That's all right. When I'm in trouble, I I call all the way to Washington to my Christian mom. And if I can't get her, then I'll sit down and talk to my husband. Now, some of us that has husbands, that's godly wisdom. Uh -oh. When they tell you something that is good for you, <laughs> what we do? Mm. Oh, that's not what I say. Who told you that? Holy How do you know? <laughs> Come on, women. You know we want to be right all the time. <laughs> your husbands. But my husband, God, I hate when he just be quiet and ignore me. I really do. But see, I had to learn to get in order. See, I'm, let me tell you what, I'm spoiled. That's my problem. My husband spoiled me before we even got married. Hello. That's why I take things for granted. And I remember one time Pastor Brown called me. She said, you need to cut that out. And I bust out laughing. I said, well, I said, you know what I did. I, she said, I know because the Lord just told me. You see what I'm saying? That's why I love about the Lord. Yes. 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 That's why I love the Lord, because the Lord fixed me up. Yes. I'm not in the place I used to be. Jesus. Even my attitude change, because uh -oh. I can really, 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 really get poop. <laughs> <laughs> but God has brought me a long way. And it can be done because if we are full with the whole armor, our whole attitude should be changing every day. Every day. Brand new. We need to ask God to fix us before we can tell anybody else to get fixed up. That's right. That's right. That's right. Jesus. When I used to do prison ministry, Five years. Oh, it hurt in my heart when God told me I couldn't do it no more. 
I cried like a baby. When he told me I had to go do hospital and nursing home, well, that hurted me more. Because that wasn't in my field. Now the street and the prison, I love it. But one thing I found out about doing the prison ministry, you better be right and you better be spirit-filled, Holy on, Ghost, on, fire. Because you are dealing with demons yeah. from every angle. Amen. Homosexuals and everything that you can call up in the house. You are dealing with them in prison. God not going to send a weak vessel in there that can be eaten up by the devil. God going to send somebody with the power of the Holy Ghost who has no fear because God is with them. I took pastor with me one time and that's all it took. He never ever went back again with me. When that gate closed, he jumped. He said, oh my God, we're locked up in here. And I told him, oh, that's okay, darling, you'll be all right. And we, I just walk along. He couldn't wait till the whole weekend was over. He said, I'll never do this again. So you see, not everybody is called to do that. Not everybody. I'm not called to go to the hospital. I'm not called to go to the nursing home. It's not that I don't love the elderly. I love them dearly. But it's just I'm not suitable for that. I told Pastor Brown, don't ever leave me there by myself. <laughs> I said, I will not do it again. I told her, don't you ever, ever leave me with these, doing this ministry here with, with the elderly. I said, no, I can't do this. Go to the hospital, pray for people. Pray for people out here that come with the needle. I told Pastor Brown, I got to go. They got the needle, I got to go. She said, well, I said, no, mm, no. I said, them doctors, look, mm, they got the needles. I can't, no, I can't handle this. I said, no, I said, look at that now. They're going to draw blood. No, I got to go. <laughs> and Pastor Brown just laughed. I said, this is not for me, okay? Everybody is not suitable for everything. Come on now. God has a call for each one of you to yes, walk in your yes, own yes, calling, yes. in your own place. But I feel that when somebody needs help and you find yourself lullaby, get up and go and help. Come get on. your hands busy. Yes. Yes. So many times I watch people, you see somebody picking up, you don't just stand there just talking, talking, talking. Why you talk? Why don't you pick up the trash? Why you talk? Why don't you pick up the empty bottles? If you see the bathroom is dirty, pick it up. But we overlook things that we we tip a toe and leave the trash there and just go like this. My God, And yet you said that you feel with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost don't operate that way. Holy Ghost don't do things like that. Holy Ghost comes with love. And Holy Ghost said, come, let's go and do this. Come, let's go and help them. Come, let's go and do that. Come, let's bless them. Let's bless here. He did not tell us to just me, 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 and nobody else. If you don't do for me, I'm not going to do for you. We cannot operate like that. Don't do that. God is tired of it. He said he's going to be coming and, and do from his house. And who is his house? You and I. You and I. And there's still hard-headed Pharisees still walking around. Don't want to hear what the leaders tell you to do. You don't want to hear it. Because they got to get it from God. This just happened, and I'm sharing this with you. This might help some of you out here. And it might help the pastors. Sometimes we get our flesh in the way. I know what I'm saying. I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about you. If you find yourself in there, 
Just say, ouch. Suck it in, move on. But I have been praying and praying and praying and asking God to fill Pastor Fred up with his power and the Holy Ghost fire and to continue to give him godly knowledge and godly wisdom and to order his footsteps and to speak to his spirit man. I pray for that. That God will use him mightily out on the streets where we are. That God will tell, come, go over there. Pastor Fred is there. Go over there. And don't you know God is doing it now? God brings him mighty men of God. But let me tell you what his wife would do. See, your wife is speaking to you guys, the ladies or whatever. Come on, help us. Help us. Yes, Lord. And if you're single, you can learn. Mm -hmm. Speak yes. So I tell Pastor Fred, I said, well, so when are you going to use so-and-so? And when are you going to use so-and-so? Uh -oh. <laughs> and he said, I don't know. I said, why not? Yep. So here I put on. Now, I'm telling you the truth because this is going to help you somewhere along the line. I put on the helmet. I take my helmet off. And then I go and pick up the apostle head and put it on. Ooh, okay? The, the mm -hmm. And let me tell you, Pastor Hines. Oh, geez, See, Pastor oh. Hines is one of them that work with us. God convicted me. I got so excited. Yeah, God with me. I got so excited. Oh, I had to go out to the kitchen and sit down at the table. And then I said, honey, you know what? The Lord told me. He told me to shut up. <laughs> he said, no. It's time now. The, the heavy meat is coming out. The heavy meat is coming out. Baby meat is not coming no more. He said it's done deal. Now the people in the neighborhood is listening to the word of God. You guys got my truth? We sometimes, we get in the way and we try to get in the way. I don't know about you guys, but I'm telling about me. See, I'm not ashamed of telling about me. You shame the devil. Cut the devil down his back. He can't do nothing. He can't go whisper and say, oh, do you know what Apostle did? No! Apostle be on top of the TV going worldwide. Hello. <laughs> so I got so excited, Pastor Hines. I went and I told Pastor, I said, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I said, whatever God tell you, whoever God tell you what to do and who to put up there to preach, go right ahead. <laughs> so the Apostle had to kick herself out the door. Don't use your title to get where you want to go, ladies. Don't do that. Do not do that. That will help you. And if you're single, hide yourself and wait for God to bring you a husband. When a husband finds a wife, he finds a good thing with favor of the Lord. That's what makes it ring so good. Hide yourself. Beautify yourself every day. Walk around owning it and say, I am looking good today. And God has a husband for me. Wonderfully made. Awesome and marvelous. Put on your perfume, whatever you do. And when you come out of your house smelling good and looking good, you don't have to front yourself. God will bring the right one. Many of us are married to the wrong people. If you're married to the right one, your soulmate, you'll have no problem. I know what I'm saying. We've been married 47 years, going 48 and God allowed. Now, do we have to go to bed and out? Of course. But if God balanced it out. God balanced it out. And when he balanced things out, it makes 
it sweet? Oh, how sweet is Jesus? Jesus is so sweet. So I don't mind telling on myself. Because now I can see what God is doing. I can see where God is taking this ministry. Jesus' ministry, bread of life. Because we had labored so long out there on the street. Now God is bringing seasonal people in. Amen. Seasonal people. Because why? The people in the neighborhood need to hear the word. They listen. They hear it. That's what you need to do. That's what we all need to do. Is live that righteous life that somebody can see the Jesus in you. Humble yourself before the Lord. Keep yourself humble. Because when you do, favor follows you. I'm sorry. If favor is not for you, but it is for me. Amen. And it's good. It's that. It's good for everybody. But I cannot, I can't tell you that, oh, no, 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 no. God gives me favor. When I tell you God gives me favor, he gives me favor. Come straight from his throne. I know what I'm saying, folks. It's so easy to live that righteous life. It's easy to follow him. Today I said, Lord, you know, I think back all the things we did in the world. Oh my God, how did we make it without you? How did we run the street without you? I said, God, you had to keep us. You already knew what you, who was going to be coming. You already knew. Even those who run away from the calling, God knew. <laughs> That you still was going to come sooner or later. I know I'm one of them. Because I told God, I don't want to serve you. I want to party. And I always said, that was dumb and stupid when I think about it. And all the alcohol I've been drinking, I told my husband, I said, we spent all that money. And all that money on our cutting of cigarettes and the case of beer, vodka, gin, and all that stuff. Look at all the money we wasted. And we can't even come to God's house and give him ten thousand dollars. Oh, we sure got me give him a dollar. But God, I expect you to do this for me. All right, you see it. Yeah. You see this lights here? It needs the money to take care of this. That's right. See, I can talk about it because we don't have no electricity running on our lot. It's just an open place. We put them up, take them down. But you got water over here running. You need to pay the water bill. We don't have no water bill. We run to the hospital. That's where the water bill is. Thank God for that. He gave us favor. So this is why I'm saying, God will make a way out of no way for you. He'll make the way. I don't care how it looks. It may not look good to you, but it looks good to him because it's already done deal. All you got to do is walk in it. Walk in it and say, Lord, I thank you. And give him the glory and give him all the praise and all the honor. Okay, I'm done because the Holy Ghost is leaving. Because when the Holy Ghost is done, I'm done. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for his name. The Lord, Lord sat down tonight and he talked to all of us. I thank him for it. Praise God. If you have a need, you can come right now to the altar. Praise God. Don't nobody need prayer. 
Bless the Lord. Come on and give God a hand. Praise.
comes to torment every one of us. Pastor Brown don't get no pass. I don't get no pass. Neither do you. But I can tell you from, from, from one experience that if you call on Jesus, he'll answer your prayer. I want to cover these children, God, in the name of Jesus. As they grow up, we just ask you to come and get you to look. As we've anointed them tonight, with God, with this hope. God, we ask that you would cleanse their, their spirits. Cover their minds, oh God. Because our enemy, he continues to walk about seeking who he might desire. And he said, oh God, if he could destroy this generation, there'd be nobody left, oh God, to spread the good news of the gospel. And so God, we ask you to keep these children in the hollow of your hand, in the center of God of your will. Build a hedge around them, God. Keep them safe from all harm and danger, that they might grow up telling the world that Jesus still saves. Jesus still delivers, oh God. Hey, now, Lord, hey, now, God, I ask you to cover their parents. Cover their parents. Whatever the enemy has told you, he's alive. See, somebody quoted tonight that only comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But my God said, He sent Jesus that we might have life and have that life more above. So I ask you a question tonight. Who report will you believe? Will you believe that of Jesus? Or will you believe what the enemy has told you? Now I know what he says. It sounds real good. But I'm going to tell you tonight that he'll always show you the prize. But we don't ever tell you what the cost is. And so if you're following Satan tonight, the price is your soul. So God, we pray right now that you would cover with your blood. That they would hear your God and con that you could convince them, oh Lord, to turn around in the name of Jesus. Give you the praise. Give you the glory instead of Satan. That's our prayer. That's our prayer. The Bible says when we say amen that we agree in the name of Jesus. So I'm asking the church to say amen. Amen. Give God a praise. Just yeah. yeah.
just she needs to be removed from that world. Now you told us, oh God, that we can care for all our kids because you care for us. And so God right now, she is leaving this thing at the altar tonight. I'm not going to let you carry it back with me. In the name of Jesus. God, oh, Lord, give it to me. He's a burden bearer. Yes, he is. He doesn't want you to care. He sent his son. He sent his son to redeem you from that curse. He said, whatever, now whatever you ask. Sunday, uh, 
then I'm going to get out of here. He's from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He's down here visiting his nephew. And uh, his nephew told him, he said, you know, we, we hear him all the time over there on that corner. And so he said, so I just opened my window, and so I can hear the word, and I can hear the music, because the music is the first thing that I track. You know, that's what the enemy uses to get to folks, too. Right but he said, the music is what got me, got my attention. Mm -hmm. And so the young man came Sunday and he said, I, I went to church over here, but I just didn't get nothing. Mm -hmm. Pastor Hines just happened to be up and the Holy Ghost was working. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I was going back to my house and the Lord said, no, you need to come on across the street. Yeah. Okay. So I want you to know, this is for you preachers and evangelists and those who want to be. You need to listen yeah. Yeah. to the Spirit of God when He's speaking yeah. because He is never going to steal your wrong. Right. Never. 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 <laughs> Don't you go off trying to do this thing on your own. Uh -huh. All right. Come on Don't do it. I can tell you, you're looking for a shipwreck if you go off on yes. your own. Yes. Second promise said, what? If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, pray. pray. Turn from the Seek my face. Then I will hear it. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to leave that with you. Seek the face of God. Yes. Seek the presence of God. Yes. When I don't care what the city is. If it's just what I need to go over Jesus. here tomorrow. Yes. Seek God for it. Yes. Seek God for an answer. Yes. Praise God, Pastor Rabbit. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. tonight, praise God. She always preaches holiness. Holiness or hell. Oh, yeah. In every spot, didn't miss nothing, praise God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Pastor Alicia, praise God, we looked at each other because <laughs> some word came out that I was just telling her before we got here. Amen. Amen. Let's hear from her right now, praise God. Amen. Let's give it one hand, praise God. Pastor Alicia Zimmerman. Praise God. Stand up and say something, sister. Praise the Lord Jesus. I just want to give God thanks because um today I was talking to Evangelist and of the truth coming to, to service tonight, you know, everything that I was like discussing the apostle brought forth. And we were just looking back and forth and I'm saying, God, you're an amazing God. Thank you for uh -huh. Jesus. It's an on time word. And it's nothing like the Holy Spirit. When God speaks expressively through his vessel, we are to hear it and adhere to. Thank you, woman of God, for that wonderful message. Amen. Thank God for that awesome praise dance and ministry. Not just praise dancing, but ministry, ministry. In the dance, praise God, was so awesome, praise God. Can we hear from you, Pastor Tim? You have nothing to say? Amen. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Hines, 
in our heart to have this revival. We need to say, Lord, Lord, revive me again. Praise God. I love you all. God bless you. Ready to get loose, y'all. Elvis is always ready to get loose. I truly thank God for him coming out and, and supporting. Praise God. I'm looking for the rest of this week. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I thank God. It's, it's a blessing. Um, thank the Lord for Pastor Linda again. Praise God. Amen. I truly thank God for her. I thank God for the realness. Thank God for the realness. It's like you're sitting out like a mother just talking to everybody. Yes. Just sitting out talking. Daughter, stop doing this. Son, stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Jesus is soon to come. Mm -hmm. And just hitting every spot. So we know when God is speaking and the devil is talking. And I truly thank and praise God for that. I thank God for just everybody that came tonight. Praise God. Thank God for Sister uh, Lawanda. I missed you on those two nights. Praise God. Praise God, and I'm praying that the choir will sing on tomorrow night. Melissa, I miss you like grace. I miss you. Praise God, and it's good to see you tonight. Praise God. Thank God for Brother Hill coming out a third night. That's a miracle. Y'all just don't know. That's a miracle. Brother Hill must love coming out here. Praise God. Not truly thank you. Praise God for touching your heart and, and bringing your friend out. Do you have something to say? Oh, no, I just. I feel like uh, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and uh, I love coming to a church that's alive and not dead. And All right, now. I love, I love the word, the word. I can say, put your armor on, get your spirit, your spirit is the word, you know. Amen. And I love the word, and I got to of it tonight. Amen. Amen. Jesus. And with that, I'm going to ask everybody to rest upon their feet. And just like we did on last night, praise God, we want to leave here. Go and hug somebody. And tell them, so you know what? I love you and I thank God for you coming out tonight and that we worship God together. Go and just greet somebody in Jesus' name. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to thank and praise God for that beautiful poem that Lawanda wrote. Let's give God another hand praise for her. That's our poet, one step poet. Amen. <laughs>